just jinxed it, but it's all right. Welcome to Tech Connect, the semi not regular podcast from the Coloma Community Schools Technology Department. We apologize for coming at you so late in the school year. Uh, we actually had a really great episode in the can uh, back in October when we asked you to ask us anything. And then when we listened to it, the audio was terrible. So we spent a few months upgrading our setup and hopefully it's coming to you sounding crystal clear now. I'm Ben Rimes. I'm the Director of Technology for Coloma Community Schools. And we're just gonna go around and uh, let's see who else we've got here. Uh, my name is Michael Glassman, a.k.a. Mike, the IT guy. I'm uh, the IT support technician for Com- Coloma Community Schools. Dan Mars, part-time instructional technology specialist, part-time curriculum director, part-time special grant funding programs. So lots of little hats and much understanding. And I'm Tanya Kimberly, uh, the district technology specialist. I've been here for quite a while and i uh, like to see how things are progressing this year ben Ooh, all right all right we're gonna we're, we're gonna kick it off um just we're so, something we're gonna do from from each podcast moving forward just a quick little what are you up to like 10 seconds or less and i'm putting you all on the spot so i'm gonna go first and let you you know give a little thought about that um what i've been up to this week uh i had the first uh, district walkthrough for secure door access. So basically, um, fancy doors with little key fob access or um, readers. There you go. No keys. Um, <clears throat> around the school district, I've been doing some preventative maintenance and care for projectors, cleaning out filters, updating some of the desktops, checking out labs, uh, and overall fixing anything um, early in the morning. Uh, it's been fairly fun. And finalizing 2022-2023 school year federal grants and working on exploring new social studies curriculum. Wow, that sounds great, Dan. Um, I have been working with the third grade this week, Mr. Levanway's class, um, using some Spiros, and I have been also working with Dan the last few weeks to uh, come up with some ideas of some new um fun things that uh, we can add to all of our current technology here in the technology department. Cool. That yeah. was that was that was succinct. And Dan was even keeping us on track too. He you guys can't see it. He held up his watch and he was like, Ben, stop it. You're talking too much. So I appreciate it. Thank you. It's a small role, but an important one. It's <laughs> <laughs> keeping <laughs> keeping me reined in. All right. So the first question we had way back in October from uh, Tyler Cantrell was, can we get more plagiarism checks for Google Classroom? He has five per class, but I'm assigning multiple assignments throughout the semester. It's really limiting. Uh, has, uh, li- limiting. Has anything changed in the world since Things since, have changed. Uh, since October? Since. Is there anything out there uh, to, but, to help with identifying, detecting? Or writing papers? For there people? are lots of brand new AI tools that are available <laughs> for this. Uh, we talked about them a little bit. Um, but I know um, the biggest um, the biggest thing we have for this, or we had, was the Google Workspace upgrade. Um, and that we had that during um, COVID because it provided a lot of extra features for recording Google Meets, things like that. It just went away. So unfortunately, we don't have those now. However, in talking about this at the district leadership level, um, it sounds like we will be bringing that back for next year. Currently, we're looking at that um, as, uh, and for those of you that are going, wait, 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 isn't Google free? Yeah, Google was free, and like everything else. They realize that they have too good of a product and that they can make more money off of it. So they now have introduced tiers. So you might see something, if you're looking at Google documentation, you might see like education fundamentals or education basic or education plus plus. 
Yes. And those are all different tiers that cost the district money per student. So the specific tier we'll be looking at is the Google Workspace for Education Teaching and Learning Upgrade. And I think right now it's like $4 a student. Uh, I just looked at it this morning, but that's the one we're looking at. That would bring in the originality reports, which is an AI that scans what the kids have written and then compares it to other papers out there on the internet to determine was this mostly plagiarized or mostly original. And we can get some links too, because I know there's concerns out there about a new AI tool that's doing a lot of writing. We'll talk, yeah, and, yeah, we'll talk about that later. There are, there are a few, <laughs> there's a few options out there. A 22 year old who was doing his own work and upset that other kids weren't, has already developed his own app that will tell you whether or not AI has written that paper with a pretty, pretty solid confidence already, so. yeah. And we'll put some links out for you. Um, so there's another question here um, that is, I, I think, it, I, anyone's fair game. Uh, this one comes from Charity. In Sheets, how can you change the color of font or fill of a cell based on whether a certain date has passed? I think, Tanya, you could, you, you could speak to this one. Sure, there's something in Excel or in Sheets that is called uh, conditional formatting and you can highlight cells and choose conditional formatting and choose any sort of um, way to identify the cells that get highlighted. Nice, nice. Can you give us like an example? Um, so if you were looking at a table and you wanted to know uh, how many of the products you had more than 10 of, you could, or less than 10 of, you could go in and create some sort of uh, conditional formatting that would highlight the cells that would have less than 10. Nice. So in this particular question, she's asking, um, like she wants to change the color of the cell or font to change based on the date. So like if it's before this date or after this date, the color, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if you can do font changes, but colors for sure. Colors for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you could make it bold or, you know, and strike I think it, it through or something like that. I'm sure that there are options for that. I think it will do font colors. So maybe not, like, go from, like, a serif font to, like, a monospaced font for you. But definitely would go from, like, a black to red or black to green or red to green or yellow if it's approaching. There's a lot of different tools within that, but probably not change from, like, you know, Menudo Sans to, to you know, Mont Monteserrat or whatever. Menudo Sans? Menudo, <laughs> Menudo, and oh, N -U -I okay. N -N -U -N -I -T -O. It's one of my favorite Google fonts. That's, <laughs> that's why I said it. That's, I'm old school, so it's better than my method. I just change the color of the sticky notes I put all over my screen. You know, once it hits a certain, they go from green to yellow to red. Or, or vice versa. They well, Charity, if that. you need help and you want me to come and sit down with you or problem solve something, just reach out. Uh, all right. Uh, and then the last question we had, and I think, Mike, this might be right up your alley. Uh, can I have a pad to write on like our presenter on Monday had? So going back in time, we had a presenter that um, – uh, for our, our Kagan day. So far back that we have another one coming we up. We're, we're coming recording up. this on Friday, I know. January 13th. So far back, so the, the presenter will have been back already by the time you hear this. Different presenter, um, but same same content gotcha. stuff. But the presenter had um, um, uh, a device that they were streaming wirelessly, but then they were writing on the, they were writing on the device itself. So like annotating on top of the slideshow that they were presenting on the actual screen of the device. So can you give us any thoughts like what 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 possible devices are out there, Mike, that like could offer that same functionality? Uh, well, I know in the professional space, more of those types of tablets are for artists and designers. There's not a lot specifically for presenters. Um, you would probably want to get either a replicating uh, uh, tablet that essentially takes the uh, screen, becomes a secondary screen, but copies it. Oh. And you draw on top of it because it adds its own art layer on it. Uh, I mean, iPads have a similar functionality depending on the app. Uh, you have um, certain touchscreen laptops uh, like I have for my Surface. I can wirelessly, wirelessly display, walk around with it, or 
you know, there's a lot of different options. It would be particular to what exactly they would want. Uh, there is no cheapest option when it comes to this. No, this is this is one of those things this, where they're like, yeah. Yeah, so, so my advice is uh, you would want to look at the broad spectrum and figure out what you want with it. If it's specifically just one thing, you don't want to spend $2,000 on an entire laptop just to do this presentation wirelessly. You would want to get one of those, uh, I guess you would call it presenter tablet that has a screen on it. Some don't have screens. Some are like the yeah, like, a, uh, like the Mobi boards have a similar functionality. Wacom tablets have some, but it's not a screen yeah. most of the time. You'd have to pay extra. So, um, so like a like a like a it would be an add-on. It would be something that you would have to attach to your device. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you could get uh, specific art tablets that just take the display wirelessly, and it controls your computer. Just copies what you do, and you annotate on it because it's its own whiteboarding annotation tool kind of like the Epson interactive pens or interactive tools nice. uh, but, uh, but there's a, a broad spectrum when it comes to wireless walking around and we were pl and we, we played around with that we, 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 we played around with a little yes. wireless adapter and we had some good results with that so that's something that hopefully you'll be able to hear about in the next coming months and possibly leading to next year that will give teachers a little bit more flexibility because that was one of the things we've heard from you guys is that we increasingly want more flexibility and we want to make sure we give that to you but we want to make sure we give it to you uh, in a way that's sustainable in a way that's um, uh, that, that we can do it on a, on a broad basis not just you know a one a, a unique situation in one classroom but something we could do uh, across the, uh, the district so Cool. That's it. That's that's all the questions. That's it. And we got all of we got all of our we got all of our giggles out and everything out before the podcast started. That's why we all sound so professional. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> An exercise in professionalism. I laugh, hey, laugh before. I like it. I'm excited for more podcasts. I'm excited for uh, more of a dialogue with the teachers um, and uh, and the students as well as we keep this going. So that's it. Until next time, we promise that there will be more regular updates because we've got the audio situation locked down now. So it should be good. So thanks, everyone. Thanks. We'll see ya. Have a good day. Have a good day. I make fiber and stuff, then to help you be regular.